everyone, Combat Reviewer here, this time reviewing on Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue number four. Now, before we start, I want my fellow subscribers and that to, to know, I've now started up my YouTube playlist, where you can find my past reviews from my early days, as well as the ones that I did during lockdown and other years. So, let's go on the review. So, Crisis on Infinite Earths is a 12-part series that is meant to feature the ending point of the pre-crisis continuity to the starting point of rebooting and fixing everything up. And issue 4 is meant to feature the death of the Monitor. So, let's go on the story. It starts off with Supergirl flying to Batgirl. And, of course, both of them sort of trying to make sense of everything going on, and Supergirl mentioning that that a lot of people are still at their homes, the villains aren't showing up, and we kind of see how Supergirl tries to save a plane, and to try and save the pilot, and Batgirl wondering what is she supposed to do. We see how at a mansion, John Constantine is talking with a guy saying, my friend, we're not going to die. None of us. Not you, not me. Certainly not this earth. Native? Sean, that's not a word. I was trust with you. I can sense what's happening here. And there indeed, friend. I know what's happening to one and all. And of course, we kind of see how Earth 1 is slowly going to be destroyed. And we see how Perif is on a, on a parallel Earth. Where he's seeing sort of destruction of this world. We see Lady Quar as well as Lord, Lord Voltron show up. And Lord Voltron interrogate the person as his analyzer analyzed him. But of course says, my energy comes back at me. And of course, we see how Lady Quar finds out her powers have no effect on Perif. And we see how Lady Quar and, and Lord Volt's daughter ends up getting killed. And this is where Perif takes Lady Court away, making her the last saver of this universe. And would actually be in, in the sort of 1999 issue, Legends of the DC Universe, Crisis on Infinite Earths. And we see how the Monitor is trying to make sure to pass on his next powers to someone worthy. And of course, we see how in Japan, we meet the future Dr. Light known as Kamiko Oshi, who is meant to be a bit arrogant, but at the same time trying to get her men to be a bit more responsible. And you can tell her father does kind of call out a bit for being a bit cold, but wants to be left alone. And then we kind of see her become the new Dr. Light. And we kind of see how Highbringer is going to end up kind of killing the Monitor, and we kind of see how Alex leaves to try and do what both of them need to do. And we kind of see how Psycho Pirate and the Anti-Monitor are planning to find the Red Tornado and use him as their next weapon. And we see how on Earth 2, during the medieval era, we see how Firestorm and Killer Frost are helped trying to protect the sort of towers and dealing with the Shadow Demons. And also meeting the past version of Shining Knight. And we see how Vendel Savage kind of wonders what, if he will have a world to, to, to left conquered. And we kind of see how both of them try to take down the Shadow Demons. With basically the Shadow Demons forming to a bigger form. And we see how others from other universes see the similar things. And we kind of see how the others end up meeting the female Dr. Light who they think is trying to keep the towers safe, but we kind of see how they later learn after a misunderstanding from, and Superman being able to speak Japanese, finds out that he's been given these powers by the Monitor and is trying to help keep everyone safe. And we see how on Themyscira Island, or Paradise Island, Wonder Woman with the other Amazons given their prayers and chants, and we see how... The monitor says, No, the warriors I sent through time and service fight. 
apparently, all is not yet ready, and but in what time remains, I cannot surrender. And so we see how the Monitor ends up meeting Perif, points out that he took him to these other universes to see what his actions have caused. Now, in a few issues later, we will learn what Perif caused and how he played a crucial role in causing the crisis. And of course, points out the towers were there for a reason. And him saying, those machines are yours? I saw one like in Atlantis. What is it? With prayer, the salvation of all life. And of course, he points out that everything has now gone AWOL and is trying to help preserve what he can. And we see how Perif learns to his shock and horror just how much he's trying to kind of salvage what he can. We see how the, the Monitor ends up meeting Highbringer, now controlled by the Monitor, but allows death to happen. And of course, ends up falling and disappearing, and Perra thinking this is the proper end, even though there are a few issues left. And of course, ending with the sort of universes all crashing down, and giving the sense of the next story that's gonna happen. So I think issue 4 is actually not that great. Again, I like the idea that they do go with a more heroic Dr. Light, but I think they could have made her a bit less jerky-ish, but a bit more understanding why everyone's acting the way they are. And I think, yeah, it would be interesting to kind of see, like, other villains trying to figure out how to solve the crisis, like the smarter ones, but it's still an okay issue. So I think it deserves a thumbs in the middle. Kind of alright, but kind of okay. So, comic reviewer here, signing out.